All right, hey guys. So a lot of people, or a couple people, some people, a number of people, have been asking me to do a like day in the life of or you know whatever video. So I was decided to do a uh, meet your breeder video. It's gonna probably be in a couple segments because I've only got like 15 minute limits or something like that on my YouTube channel. But all right, so this is my bedroom. My day starts off here. Snakes. Shotgun. <laughs> Snakes. The only reason I have a shotgun there is because I rent this apartment from a friend and the person who used to live here is in jail and I've been told he's a pretty bad dude and if he ever comes back, at least I've got my protection right there um that's my bed this is my fiance's bed no we're not old-fashioned <laughs> um the reason we have separate beds is well we used to have separate bedrooms before we moved in here but uh we had separate bedrooms because I snore or used to snore really bad um, I mean I snored I've woken myself up snoring, we'll put it that way, and she couldn't sleep through it. I'm really starting to think it was the fact that I used to have the rats in my bedroom, um, and they were kicking up a lot of dust and stuff, and it plugged me up in the middle of the night, because she sleeps just fine now with me over here. Um, the other thing is, too, is like I haven't slept next to somebody in a couple of years, and if I sleep next to somebody, I just don't get sleep. So we sleep in separate beds, plus we sleep at different times. Like, I'm mostly third shifter. Uh, yeah, there are mattresses and box springs on the floor. That's the way we like it. She has a bed frame, I think, but she doesn't use it. I just don't like being up high. Um, I had a bed frame for a while. Her dad gave me a bed frame, and I put the bed frame together, and I couldn't sleep on it. I was too high. I've been so used to sleeping as a, on a mattress and box spring on the floor since I was a teenager. And I just like it. <laughs> so, uh, bookshelf, just some stuff I like. I'm not Buddhist, but I like Buddha. Some stuff. Uh, that's my Ruger 1022. Um, there's another Marlin Model 60 back there. My other hobby is guns. Um, I will, gonna, I'll show those to you guys. Not right now. After what happened in Colorado, I don't want to be making a video showing off my guns and get put on some radar. You know, I'm not one of those crazy people. I target shoot. I do believe in defending yourself. Um, if need be. But, you know, I'm not insane. <laughs> put it that way. So, uh, yeah. So, you guys, you've seen my snakes. It's a dream catcher that my fiance made me for one of our anniversaries. She did a really awesome job too. I don't know, maybe it was my birthday. Either way, it's cool. It's like those are crow feathers and she put some uh, stuff I like in there. Uh, that's some antlers from when I worked for the DEP for six months. So yeah, just basic, that's bedroom. Um, I don't really want to show off the rest of the apartment, but this is where my day starts. And then, pretty much I get up, and I hit my computer. You guys have seen that. I go through, see if I've gotten any messages, see if I've gotten any comments. Answer messages, answer comments. Um, and just wake up. I use the computer to wake up, basically. And then I take a shower, and then I watch TV. Um, I don't have cable, but I usually will watch a uh, Netflix series. Uh, right now, Christine and I are watching Heroes. We watch that with dinner sometimes. Um, got a, t a ton of DVDs. Uh, what else do we watch? Oh, um, Pawn Stars on Netflix. So, yeah. I'm going to cut it out here. I'm working tonight. I'll show you where I work. And that'll be the second part of the video. Oh. Uh, okay, so... 
part two of a day in the life of Reptile Nexus, uh, aka me. <laughs> this is where I work. This is the lobby of the hotel I work at. Now, funny, interesting tidbit. Back in, it was 2011 or 2010 or something, I don't know. Anyway, Ty West wrote a movie about this place, or for this place. And they came back and they shot the movie in the hotel. So, those of you who have seen the movie probably recognize this lobby. All right, the name of the movie was The Innkeepers. This is a little painting a local artist did of it. All right, and this is one of the still frames we have from when they shot the movie. Um, now, interesting story. This is Pat Healy right here. He played a character named Luke in the movie. My name is Luke. And that's not a coincidence. Uh, Ty actually named the character after me. Because uh, I was the one who told him some of the spooky ghost stories about this place that kind of gave him the idea to write the movie. Some of the stuff that was in the movie is actually still here. That China Hutch. Uh, we ended up buying it and keeping it. That bookshelf. They made this bookshelf as a prop. And it was over there across the way. And it was blocking the, the way down to the bar. Um, but yeah. So I work in a hotel that was in a movie. Uh, I was named after, a uh, character was named after me. Uh, I spend a couple nights a week here in one 3 to 11 shift. That's my least favorite shift. Oh, actually, I'll show you this hallway. It's kind of cool. I mean, first off, it's got that whole shining feeling. But there's a whole bunch of, like, original newspapers and stuff. Like, this is the Litchfield Inquirer from 1850. <laughs> uh, this is the original newspaper, Hartford Current from seven no that was established in 1764 oh 1963 from Kennedy's death uh, this is Worcester spy 1901 when McKinley died uh, another McKinley shot paper New York Herald death of a president uh, 1865. <laughs> so, and then this is 1865, New York Herald, assassination of President Lincoln. This is a real newspaper. <laughs> so, which is interesting considering that the hotel was built in 1891. But, yep, so I spend my nights in this creepy old, supposedly haunted building. Um ghost stories. The only two experiences I've really had, well I've had three, but one of them is not that interesting. Uh, across the way there, above the china hutch, there's a plate up on the wall. Now, that is not the plate that used to be there. There used to be a red one with gold trim. I think it's over there above the fireplace. Anyway, that china hutch wasn't there. There was a chair there. And my buddy was hanging out right here and I was behind the desk and we were talking and that plate flipped forward off the wall from the top like it flipped forward like somebody pushed it and it fell it spun and it landed face up in front of the chair now if gravity had taken it it should have fallen from the bottom slipped hit the chair and probably broken but it didn't you know I don't really classify that as a totally as a haunting experience because it could have just been physics but it was highly improbable that it would flip forward um, and the other one I definitely do chalk up I was back here 
uh, in the chair and I was dozing off it was the middle of the night and I was just falling asleep I was tired I was just exhausted and I heard a woman whisper my name into my ear like she was standing right next to me I just heard look and I snapped awake and looked and there was nobody there um, other stories supposedly that chair over there belonged to the original owner Mrs. Connolly uh, she's up on the wall there with her husband probably can't see it because the lights are blocking it out but uh, that chair will rock never seen it um, oh I have experienced one note of the piano go off by itself but that could have been anything could have been a stuck key or a stuck hammer or a mouse on the string but it was just one quick like doom um, but yeah that's about it this is my job. Um, honestly, on nights like tonight, there's nothing happening. I mean, it's 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. 3 a.m.? 3 a.m. It just turned 3.05. And I mean, nothing is happening. We have 12 guests upstairs. I haven't seen a living person since midnight. And that's my my Sunday nights go. Um, Saturdays, Fridays and Saturday nights, it gets pretty crazy, but on Sundays, nothing happens. So I sit here, I do the audit, fix any mistakes that need to be fixed, and then I just kill time on Netflix. <laughs> uh, actually, right now I'm on YouTube, so I'm watching Granddaddy Herb's video. <laughs> uh, yeah, not many, not much else to post about my job. Um, I'm supposed to go shooting soon, so I'll see if maybe I can get some video of that. No promises, though. But if I do, it'll be after this segment, so... You'll see some of the other things I do. But that's it for this. That's my job. Yankee Peddler Inn. Um, you can look it up. Uh, rent the innkeepers. Don't buy it, I'll warn you. But rent it, if you can, for a couple bucks. Red box it, whatever. It's interesting to watch. Uh, spooky movie, but not like bone chilling terror, you know. But uh, <laughs> it's funny because Pat Healy, after I watched the movie, we have an old theater across the street, the Warner Theater, and they, they did a, a movie thing. And Ty and Pat came back. Sarah Paxton couldn't make it. Kelly McGillis couldn't make it. But, uh,. They came back and we watched the movie. I got it for free because, I mean, I would hope I would. <clears throat> Seeing as a free copy of the DVD is all I really got out of the deal. But, uh, we watched the movie and then I told Pat afterwards, I was like, dude, I don't know if you were trying to pay attention to my mannerisms and, like, my personality, but you got it pretty dead on. And he took that as a compliment. Um, he, he thanked me for that but it's pretty funny like the sarcasm some of the sarcasm he uses in that movie is pretty much exactly how my sense of humor is but i'm gonna cut this out here so we can leave a little extra for some you know more stuff all right out all right hey guys so i wanted to add another section to my you know meet the breeder thing um what got me into reptiles and snakes especially uh, ever since I was a young kid you know like five uh, I've been catching snakes at my grandmother's house pretty much always garter snakes and I always wanted to own a snake but my mom was afraid of them wouldn't let me have them I asked for years years if I could have a snake and then finally I think I was like 15 or something and you know what I said to hell with it she never comes into my bedroom anyway my mom was really lenient and it was part of the reason I never got into trouble as a kid but uh, she was like you know what she never comes into my bedroom anyway I'm gonna get myself some snakes so I took some of my own money that I earned from working and I bought a pair of snow corns a, a breeding pair I never actually bred them funny story but and then I ended up getting another corn snake from my neighbor, actually. I traded him... Oh, wait, no. I traded that to him for an iguana. 
but I don't know why I ever had iguanas. Um, so yeah, I got these corn snakes, and I had them in a 55-gallon tank. Keep in mind, I was young. I didn't know better. I had them both in the same tank. Um, they were doing fine, though, but I had them in a 55-gallon tank, and heat lamp rather than a heat pad. You know, all the noob mistakes. Well, one day my mom walks into my room to see what I wanted for dinner, and she's like, what's in that tank? And I'm like, my snakes. She's like, when did you get snakes? I was like, I don't know, like like last year? She was like, huh, well, I won't be coming in here again. And then like that was it. She, she didn't put, pitch a fit. She didn't, you know, ground me or anything. She just went with it. So I ended up getting a couple more snakes along those. Like, I, uh, I sold the sold the corn snakes and I had a king snake and after a while I had no snakes and then I moved out on my own and uh, I had a couple more corn snakes well by moved out on my own I mean I moved up an apartment above my mom because it was for rent with my friends I had a corn snake um, I went through animals fast they didn't die I just get them and then get bored and you know, rehome them. And I'm not proud of that fact. But I mean, like I, I had a ferret and I ended up rehoming him because he crapped everywhere. And I had corn snake and then I rehomed him to the same guy. Um and I had a um, Chinese water dragon and I rehomed him and uh, anyway, a couple years later, I moved to a different apartment with different friends, and a female friend of mine messages me on Face or uh, MySpace. She's like, "I have a friend who's about to have a baby, and she's got a adult male ball python. Do you want him?" And I was like, "Hell yeah! I always wanted a ball python. I just never got one." So I got him. His name was Damien. He was 1,500 grams, and that started the ball pythons. I ended up buying a female uh, for him. I named her Eve, I think. And then I ended up buying another male at Petco that was interesting looking. Named him Adam. You know, I just thought it was funny to name snakes after biblical characters. Don't ask me why. I just thought it was amusing. Um, then I ended up rehoming Damien because I, I, I got into morphs. Uh, I started making deals with people. And I got my first male lemon pastel. Nerdline lemon pastel. I paid $550 for him from snakeevolutions.com Tony Hurt I don't think he's in business anymore and it was uh it was cool cuz I loved it you know morph and then <clears throat> like uh, 2 months later his babies dropped to half of what they were and uh, I mean now you can get a super pastel for 300 bucks a male and I paid 550 for my first male and uh I had him for a couple years before I finally bred him. My first few seasons were just pastels, pastels to normals. I produced pastels and normals, and that's all I produced. And then that changed last season when I produced my pewters and some cinnamons. And then this season when I produced yellow bellies, fires, fireflies. And then next season I got big plans. Um, hoping for some blue-eyed leucistics, white diamonds, um, whatever else. Uh, I still have to figure out my breeding season. I'm hoping I can get a male from the Nexus female so I can try to prove her out the following season. Because I've, I've got a female that survived from her five-egg clutch, only one egg survived. And she's a female, of course. Um, yeah, so, that's how I got into snakes. And, I mean... I got plans, you know? I got dreams and plans. If I can get some more space and some more money, I want to expand and I want to make this my living, you know? I mean, I'm in it because I love the animals, and but the extra money's not, you know, it is a business for me. You know, the extra the extra money is also good. So, and if I could turn this into my job, I mean, I don't I don't want to be BHB. I don't want to be Ralph Davies. I don't want to be Kevin McCurley. I don't want to be that level. 
You know, I don't need to make millions. But if I can make enough to be comfortable and not have to worry about money and still enjoy the hobby, I'd be happy. And honestly, it's the only thing I can see myself doing. It's the only thing I'm good at. It's the only thing I could stand doing because I'm tired of working for people. I'm tired of having a boss. You know, I'm tired of having to answer to somebody. I want my own business. And if it's not going to be a retail pet store, which would do terribly in my area, it's going to be this. So that's it. But this is the the first half of the Meet the Breeder um, video series. There's probably going to be, well, half or third. We'll see what happens because I want to show you some of my other hobbies. But I have to get out and actually do them because it's been raining lately. <clears throat> I want to talk about, you know my favorite media, be it movies, music, stuff like that. You know, just let you guys get to know me a little bit more. But uh, don't worry, I'm still going to be doing snake videos, because that's what I do. So, that's it for now. Uh, this is my Facebook page, check it out if you haven't. You know, friend me if you haven't. Whatever. It's uh, facebook.com slash nexus. So, hope you enjoyed the first part of the Know Your Breeder videos. There will be more. Out. Uh